This is Inky Splatterfish Demo. I'm Bill James. It's a demonstration of ink techniques. Step one is to draw. In this case, I'm using the subject matter of a fish, a color race blue pencil, some illustration board, and drawing in the fish. This is a develop developmental process here. Uh, where I'm starting out with an underdrawing and developing the drawing. I'm working all over the page here, trying to get composition and get the visual forces to work together. You could do reference studies and small sketches to begin. I just drew this one directly, having done these fishes in the past. They're inventive fishes. They're based on real fishes, but uh, it's, it's imaginary is what's happening here. I like to keep the drawing process open and free, try not to uptight, get too uptight with it. Um, here I'm developing it a little bit more, uh, racing out. These little tiny fish here were a lot more fun to draw than the bigger fish. I think I had been warmed up at this point. Um, that sort of speaks to going in and um, doing some warm up. I do am a big sketchbook drawer. I draw my sketchbook regularly, uh, both as a self fulfillment thing and also simply as a, a practice thing, um, like shooting a thousand free throw shots. Uh, the sketchbook functions in that matter as well. So I'm kind of liking it now. So I think I'll go to the inking stage. I'm using Dr. Martin's Black Star ink and a Nico G tip. And that's a handle there. It, the tip comes away from the handle. You'll notice that I have a little board to the right side. I'm right-handed. You wanna to try to keep the ink to the right side um, so that you're not going across your drawing and splattering all over it. Here, I'm shaking out a little of the ink and you can use the board too to get the pen started. Sometimes, uh, if, if it's not a new pen, you can it gets a little stuck. Um, there. So here we go. I'm ready to go. Always deciding where to start. A little uptight. And we begin. Uh, you notice that I rotate the board as I'm drawing too, upside down and from sides to uh, get the best kind of flow with the hand. Uh, what's really nice about a dip pen is that you get both thick and thin lines out of the same pen depending on the pressure that which you you press. Um, I'm using both ink line and developing ink line as value through hatching and cross hatching. And I think at this point I'm really enjoying doing this drawing. It's a lot, ink is just a lot of fun. It flows. Um, perhaps what I wasn't liking at this point is I was getting a lot of splatters that were unintended. However, I have learned to allow those splatters to happen. Uh, for myself, and this is just me personally, but um, I'm a messy person and the messiness works for me. And if I tried to be too precise, too uptight, it would not work. The drawing would not come out. It would just, it would just feel horrible. So working back into it. Now again, you notice that I'm working all over the drawing, trying to get all the visual forces to work together. Um, the emphasis, the energy, the flow, the value, contrasts. I really like drawing the little teeth. That was so much fun. As you can probably see there, there's parts of the drawing um, that are going better than other parts of the drawing. And I think that's important as an artist to sort of respect yourself in that sense um, of when it's going well to just keep going and, and ride out that wave of, of things going well. And when it's not going well, stop. Here, I think I had waited a little too long to stop. I thought blow drying these uh, little spots of ink would solve the problem. They were kind of frustrating me at that point. And you notice it got a lot worse. The ink splattered all over the place there. It just flowed out. 
Uh, I do have a solution though, Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White. This is a, um, a white a white out that's made for, for India ink and covers really well. You can also use it as a drawing tool. I use a, a brush that I only use for the ink because, or for this uh, Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White, uh, because I want the brush to stay clean so that it doesn't get polluted by any other colors so that I get the nice white. And we'll fix her up right here. I'm really thinking of this uh, painting back in as a drawing activity too as a good thing. And the world is feeling a little bit better now. And you can see right there, I, I, I thought that line was a little too thick, so I, I, I used the white ink to adjust the line there. Now I'm working back in with some more pen and ink, continuing the developmental process of the drawing. Dabbing out with some paper towel, adding some more hatching and cross hatching. Trying, for me, drawing is very much a felt thing. I, I use the knowledge of a form that I've learned and, and observation, but uh, I have to sort of feel like it's right. So I'm trying to get the feel right in terms of how these cross hatchings are developing the form there. Okay, now I get to the fun part. I don't know why the side little notes oftentimes in a drawing or painting, in this case the inking, are easier, more fun, and come out better. I don't know what it is about that. I, maybe you don't care as much about them, so somehow you just do them. Um, and there it is at this point. I think what I had done is I went back in one time too many when I should have stopped. So this is the next day, actually. I went back in. I'm a little hesitant about it. Uh, but I think I can make it better. I usually draw better in the morning. Something about staying in that semi-conscious dream state is good for me. You know, building up the value and it's feeling so much better now. Enough of the drawing has been developed here that uh, it's now just become kind of fun. I've, I've established where I want the different patterns, value patterns to be, and I have a good feel for the structure and everything. And so now it just becomes a matter of enjoying the mark making process. A little more blow dryer. And here I'm using my Mars plastic eraser to get rid of the blue line. Um, the blue line has served its purpose now. You want to make sure your ink is completely dried before you do this. And I have a big brush I love, and I'm wiping off the little excess with that brush. A little more ink. What you don't get in this in this video is um, is the steps in between where I've stopped and just sort of wandered around the house to get a cup of coffee, uh, to think about the drawing, to not think about the drawing. I think that's very much a part of the creative process as well. There's a, a sense of doing, but also you need those breaks in there. Some more bleed proof white, and ah, uh, we finally got to the to the to the to doing the ink wash. So what I'm using here is a tray, um, and I think much like a watercolor artist is in terms of progressions. So I got the black ink in one end and the water. You might want to think of your water as the white in this kind of process. I know it's the board that's the white, but the more water you add in, the lighter the ink is. And so uh, by doing that, you can get these values in between. And I like that type of progression thought. I also like the fact that you can, um, that ink covers or wash wash ink in this in this case covers rather quickly you can fill in and it's kind of a flowing activity a really enjoyable flowing activity um, the pen and ink is kind of this scratchy grumpy side of myself and the the wash is kind of this flowing natural feel-good side uh, very much like playing in the waves at the beach or surfing the waves at the beach
I'm doing sort of several different techniques here. Uh, one is just dry, dry board and wet wash. And then you've noticed in some of here that the board is damp and I've added in more ink and you get a nice soft edge. That's called wet into wet. More wet into wet, developing the value even further. Give those little guys a little value. Turn the board upside down. And at this point, the drawing is just pure joy. It's just a lot of fun getting one of those artist highs that you don't want to leave. In a perfect world, I just let it air dry, but in this case, for this demonstration, I wanted to use the blow dryer to save some time. Work in with a little more ink. Again, just sort of reinforcing those value patterns already established earlier on in the drawing. And letting the drawing sort of speak to me, telling me what it needs at this point. Uh, really, really good skill to develop is this dialogue you have with your painting or drawing while you're working with it to allow it to speak to you. Now to the fun part. We're using here frisket paper. Frisket paper has one side that is sticky uh, and one side that's not. It's a piece of plastic. It's traditionally used by airbrush artists. Uh, what you do is you create masks with it. Lay it down from the center out to get no bubbles. In this case, this is an older piece that was already kind of wrinkly. Exacto knife, sharp, is best for this activity. And you want to cut around to make the mask. I like to think this cutting as a drawing thing, with the same kind of awareness that you have when you're making a drawing, that sort of aliveness and alertness as opposed to simply a tracing activity. Uh, it could very easily turn into a tracing activity, but I find there is a difference, even when it appears to be sort of a tracing thing, between sort of a mindless tracing and an awareness of drawing. Now you want to peel off the uh, frisket paper, leaving uh, the part that you don't want ink to get on and uh, exposing the part where you do want the ink to have happen. You notice I'm pulling away from the large fish there. Uh, that helps it to not rip and tear. And maybe one of the other things you noticed in this is that I tried to cut it in one long continuous cut, uh, being really mindful of the corners. That's one place that you can run into problem uh, with those tearing when you pull it off there. And now to the super fun part. Old toothbrush, a glove, ink and splatter. Now the type of splatter you get is dependent upon one, the brush, and two, when you actually splatter it, and also how three, how high you splatter it there. So there, this is something that is kind of a grunge, random sort of act, but there is a bit of control that you can have with it. There is technique to it. If you were to take the first splatter after you had dipped it into the ink and just splatter it like that, you get a really wet, runny uh, splatter. So you can splatter it a few times to get the coarseness of the splatter. And then the height and angle also um, create the type of splatter pattern that you get. One thing that happens when you're doing this is that uh, it becomes a little hard to judge value because you're, um, the part of your drawing that is covered up will get darker and darker. So you, you have to sort of, in your mind, think about what the value can be or what it is there. With this particular drawing, I was using uh, a point, using it for a point of emphasis, a high contrast area of light and dark and making the more density there. Here, uh, using the X-Acto knife to peel off the mask. Be sure, again, that this is completely dry at this point. And here's how it looks at this point. We're almost done. But I'm thinking that big black splot in the back is not what I'm desiring. So I'm gonna go back in with my Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White. I'm also at this point using, using that to um, 
adjust the splatters. You can go in with that and um, maybe re rediscover some of those teeth that have, have fallen out in the process there. And then doing some uh, drawing back in with the pen and ink to finish this one off. And there you have it, the completed drawing. I hope you enjoyed uh, listening to this. Uh, here's a list of materials. Take care. We'll see you again. Thank you. Bye-bye.